Hello everyone. I'm going to, uh, I'm Dr. Suhas. I'm a junior resident in radio diagnosis and I'm uh, presenting this paper on spectrum of intracranial lipomas case series. Uh, the aim is to present a pictographic review of spectrum mm -hmm. of intracranial lipoma presentations and to describe associated anomalies and features. Methods, retrospectively, cases with CTMRI reports dating mm -hmm. intracranial lipomas were taken from the departmental packs in Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College. Key, key, key imaging characteristics related to intracranial lipoma and associated anomalies were recorded. Coming to our first case, here we see that the genuine and rostrum of the corpus callosum are well visualized in the body, isthmus, and splenium are not. So it has partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. In, the, in this region, we see a large T1 hyperintensity and it is communicating extracranially through a tract and defect in the frontal bone. We see a few other similar appearing tracts as well. On T2 coronal image, it appeared bright and it showed, uh, uh, see, uh, and it appears hypo intense on T1FS. So it is likely suggestive of a fat containing lesion. It is causing displacement of the uh, fibers as seen on the DTT. On the flare image, it, the lesion appeared hypo-intense and we can also see dilatation of the posterior horns of bilateral lateral ventricles. To summarize, our case has partial agenesis of the corpus callosum and the corpus callosal lipoma, which is showing extracranial extension. We can also see colpocephaly in this case. The same patient showed signal dropout on SW images and the pre and the post contrast T1SS images show peripheral contrast enhancement. On CT, we see a hypodense lesion corresponding to hypodense lesion, which is extending extracranially through a small defect in the uh, frontal bone. The same seen on the uh, coronal CT image. Coming to our second case, this case too has, uh, has partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. A large pericallosal interhemispheric uh, lipoma is noted, interhemispheric uh, lesion showing T1 hyperintensity and suppression on fat sub on FS images are seen. The lesion is also showing intracranial extension of the lipoma. A third case has a pericallosal uh, T1 hyperintensity as seen in transverse, as seen in sagittal and transverse images. A uh, corresponding low, low hypo-intense area is seen in the same region on CT images. So we come to a conclusion of uh, uh, pericallosal lipoma. Here we can also see a soft tissue density which is extending through a defect in the basal part of the frontal bone, likely to be a meningoencephalocele. Coming to our fourth case, it has a T1 hyperintensity along the pericallosal region in the entire extent of the corpus callosum. It shows signal dropout in SWI and correspondingly appears bright on face. Our fifth case is similar and it, ha and it shows a pericallosal T1 hyperintensity along the entire extent. Uh, in our sixth case, uh, in, the inter in the Fox region, we see a hypodense lesion, which is likely to be a Fox lipoma. In the seventh case, 
we have a T1 hyperintensity as seen in the axial and sagittal images, likely to be quadrigeminal plate lipoma. In this image, we see a T1 hyperintensity in the region of the cribriform plate, likely to be a cribriform plate lipoma. To summarize the findings, uh, to summarize our cases, our first case had a corpus callosal lipoma with extracranial extension. It was associated with partial agenesis of the corpus callosum and corpocephaly. A second case had periculosal interhemispheric lipoma, and it also showed partial agenesis of the corpus callosum along with intraventricular extension of the lipoma. A third case was that had curvilinear lipoma in the posterior portion of the corpus callosum. It was associated with frontal meningoencephalocele. Our fourth case had curvilinear pericolosal lipoma along the entire corpus callosum. Our fifth case had a lipoma of corpus callosum and cavum septum pellucidum. Our sixth case had Fox lipoma. Seventh case was that of quadrigeminal plate lipoma. Eighth was that of pibriform plate lipoma. And our last four cases were not associated with any associated anomalies. Discussion. Intracranial lipomas are not tumors as such, but rather a result of abnormal differentiation of embryonic menix primitiva. They are frequently associated with abnormal development of adjacent structures. Location. Intracranial lipomas are widely distributed in the intracranial compartment. Although they are found easily anywhere, certain regions are characteristic. Pericolosal lipomas comprise 45% of all intracranial lipomas and they are usually associated with the agenesis of the corpus callosum in approximately 50% of the cases. They are divided morphologically into tubular nodular and curvilinear types. 25% of intracranial lipomas are quadrigeminal cistern lipomas. They are associated with underdevelopment of the inferior colliculus. 15% are supracellular cistern lipomas. 10% are cerebellopontine angle lipomas. These lipomas often have facial nerve and vestibulocochlear nerve coursing through the lipoma. 5% are sylvian fissure lipomas and rarely they can even be choroid plexus lipomas. Imaging characteristics on CT, they typically appear as non-enhancing masses with uniform pad density, hence negative CT attenuation values. It has a lobulated soft appearance conforming to the adjacent anatomy. Some peripheral calcifications may be present. On MRI, MRI with and without fat saturation are able to make the diagnosis easily. In the absence of fat saturated images, then chemical shift artifact may be useful. Signal characteristics are that of fat, T1 hyperintensity, T2 hyperintensity. T1 with contrast enhanced gadolinium image shows no enhancement. Fat saturated sequences show low signal. On SWI, they can produce blooming due to susceptibility artifacts. Differential diagnosis. The differential is essentially that of masses which contain fat and therefore include intracranial dermoid. If ruptured, will also have multiple droplets scattered throughout the subarachnoid space, usually in the midline. Intracranial teratoma, lipomatous transformation of neoplasm such as in peanut, ependymomas, or gliomas. On MRI, if no fat-saturated sequences are available, then a number of other possibilities should be entertained, which also have high T1 signal. They are thrombosed perianeurysm, often will have a calcified rim, and hemosiderin staining on gradient echo or SWI sequences. White epidermoid, rare, and will restrict on DWI. These are my references. Thank you.